Hello there! Pokemon Fire Red holds a special place in my heart. It was my introduction to the world of gaming and opened up a can of worms that's filled with countless hours of neckbeard sports. So what better way to pay homage to one of the greatest game franchises ever than to remake the remake to Pokemon Red, but in Excel of course. So this is my test to see if I can remake Pokemon Fire Red in Excel all in 24 hours. With my first couple of hours, I jump right into the game. I start with my planning, the core to any good game. I open up an Excel tab and start listing out all the core mechanics of the game. It becomes pretty clear pretty soon that out of all that I have planned, that there are two key dynamics to get right. The overworld and its associated movement mechanics, and secondly, the battle gameplay mechanics. Having my plan sorted, I jump straight into working out the movement mechanics. WASD keys to move around and the spacebar to interact, all made possible with the power of Excel VBA language. And for those that don't know, Microsoft Programs has its own coding language called Visual Basic for Applications, or VBA. And that's how all this beauty fits together. As I am using Pokemon actual assets in this demonstration, I will not be able to share my files publicly. However, all my other games with similar movement mechanics and gameplay mechanics are available for download free now. So why don't you check out those videos as well? Now that we have movement sorted, we need to start thinking about flag, transport, and teleporting mechanics and the door mechanics themselves. The overworld in my Pokemon game is very much one large grid-based map, similar to how the original games worked. What this means is in order to tackle internal rooms, I have made these extra locations somewhere else on the game grid with a form of teleport to jump the player character around. Standing on the right tile and pressing spacebar to teleport Teleport the character into an internal location, then make sure that the Excel code keeps the player character centered in the camera view. Effectively so that you can jump around all over the map, but maintain a view that it looks like you're entering a building. In reality, you're just jumping somewhere else on the Excel overworld. On top of this, we also want flag-based teleports. For such circumstances, when you meet Professor Oak for the first time in the long grass, and he automatically takes you into his lab to give you a starter Pokemon. This is a flag that we want to trigger only once, so that on future visits, the teleporting mechanic is disabled. Now that we have the basics of movement and teleporting around the map, we need to actually build the actual game map itself to explore and jump around. I mean, after all, it doesn't really matter if I can run around an empty Excel file if there are no Pokemon Dynamics to play itself. As much as possible, I wanted to make a two-scale remake of the world of Kanto. So that means making a near grid to scale replica of the gameplay map, starting in Pallet Town, traveling north through Route 1, entering Viridian City, up through Route 2, then through the bug-infested Viridian Forest, reaching Pewter City and everything else beyond. What we also can't forget is all the internal buildings of this game, like I mentioned before, the starting player house, Professor Oak's lab, Pokemon centers, Pokemon marks, Pokemon gyms, and all the wonderful buildings in between. The scale of these original games have never truly hit me until I try to make them myself, and to think that these are almost 30 years old. And my computer ended itself. No life at all, and I lost all my recorded footage. Last thing you want to do when you're scrambling against the clock. Luckily, my Excel files are saved to the cloud, so I'm able to recover them. So what I've done is I've spent two hours trying to fix, unsuccessfully, mind you, my PC, before updating an old laptop to continue with this challenge. If the quality in this video is lacking a little bit, it's because I'm running what is virtually on a potato. By this stage, I was tired and frustrated, but I knew before I called it a night, I needed to make progress on what was becoming the meat and bones of this operation which is the gameplay battle mechanics themselves. Everything from getting the sprites, the full list of available Pokemon moves, the damage calculations, status effects, move orders, and all the basics of an AI system and how the enemy, both wild and player controlled, will function. To call this painful was an understatement, particularly for some reason getting the appropriate text to unpair for what transpired each turn in battle. I often got the same turn order mixed up. My favorite bug to encounter has been when the enemy trainer continues trying to switch into a fainted Pokemon and you get this wonderful gameplay loop from a fainted Pokemon to a fainted Pokemon. It's just truly fantastic. And that was enough for the first session. It was time to recharge my batteries. Sleep, rest, recovery, shower, eat, all that good stuff. I had four hours left to finish what I could in this mess before having a couple hours to just tidy things up. 
We need to get the battle mechanics working. After all, that is the essence of a good Pokemon game. It doesn't matter how well you can walk across the world map if there's nothing to do on it. My first focus was on wild battles. Everything from the triggers and running over the grass to having a catching mechanic. Now we had to work on the enemy battle logic. This includes having a switching mechanic where the enemy trainer can switch in Pokemon that still have HP remaining. Given there are multiple Pokemon, now we have to work on the enemy battle logic. This includes having a switching mechanic where the enemy trainer can switch in Pokemon that still have HP remaining. Given that there are multiple Pokemon, now the key is also to make sure that the battle has an end trigger, ending either when you have zero health or the enemy trainer's Pokemon have zero health. With all these battles, we need to have end battle conditions, such as a lost battle trigger happening where you would get no EXP, your Pokemon would be fully healed, but you need to respawn all the way back with Mum's house. Then we need successful battle triggers with experience gain and level ups. At the end of a battle, all Pokemon in the party would get EXP for the victory, regardless of their contribution. Again, much more friendly this way and coding friendly with those suffering from Excel Microitis. Moves. As your party gets to higher levels, then new moves and battle need to be unlocked. The grinding and training needs to be rewarded after all. Rather than giving the player set choices of moves, I've defined a move list where on level up, a Pokemon's moves will update automatically. Now, last but not least is the key to Pokemon, and it's the beauty of Pokemon Evolution. Now, I, need, I coded this to happen as the final player condition at the end of each battle after level up. Whew. Hours 23 and 24, my final couple hours of the game, I was against the clock. This was all about testing and refining the game that I had. There was no time to add any new meaningful battles, but this was about time to fix everything. I was swatting bugs at a rate that Raid would be proud of. And that was that. My time was up and it was time to showcase what I put together. And if you've made it this far, please consider subscribing and liking this video. This is a passion project and your support really does mean the world to me. Now part two is our gameplay showcase. Now that we've made a game, we have to play it. Like any new game we start in the glorious paddle town, the music hits you like a wave of nostalgia. Let's start heading towards Route 1, but obviously our old friend Professor Oak stops us immediately before heading into the long grass. Now we have a simple text dump that is much quicker gameplay progress than the normal, than the original games. Who needs dialogue after all? We get automatically transported into Professor Oak's lab and we get to choose our Pokemon quickly where we make the only obvious choice, which is the little green monster, of course. As you would expect, immediately Oak's grandson decides it's time to test our new battle mods. Our rival obviously has chosen the fire lizard to one up our grass type. Battles kick off the same way with the 90s gaming music only rivaled by the GoldenEye paw screen. As you would have done as a kid, I immediately spam out the tackle button and ride it all the way to victory. We leave Pallet Town towards Viridian City via Route 1. Our first adventures into the long grass with our first wild Pokemon battle of Sparrow. Easy victory there, lapping up that sweet EXP. A second wild Pokemon battle, this time with a Rattata. Let's catch this one, toggling our in game battle toggle to catch. Better add our new Pokemon to our party, so no need to run to the PC in my game. Everything can be controlled on the fly. Now let's quickly go home and heal, and I'll cut back when I have some more health from Mum. A third wild Pokemon battle, this time a Pidgey. Another Pokemon I really want to add to the party. Let's see what we can do. And you know the drill by now, spam tackle and catch it, adding it to our party, which is growing nicely, I might add. We already have a Pidgey, so we need to change our catch option from catch to release. One Pidgey is enough, thank you very much. A tough battle, but worth it with some really good level ups there. We better rush into Viridian City and heal at the Pokemon Center. The lovely Nurse Joy is waiting for us. Let me show you how the PC works. It's pretty simple, restoring all your Pokemon in your party's health back to 100%. Now just for a second, how nice does Viridian City look in this Excel? I know it has graphical limitations, limitations, but it isn't half bad, is it? Let's go see the Pokemart clerk and see if she is something for our woody friend down south. We collect the parcel and are instructed to play Delivery Boy. Let's get our jog on and run back down to Pall Pallet Town, seeing which wild battles we can avoid on the way.
I spoke too soon, let's squish this rat quickly, get the XP and keep on running. Ooh, that's an interesting one, a Mankey appears. We better catch him. But that's when the wild Pokemon player pools that I've created becomes more obvious. All the Pokemon to catch before Viridian Forest, as in Route 1 and Route 2, are now allocated into one catch pool. So you've got Nidorans, you've got Mankeys, you've got Pidgey, you've got Rattata, and you've got Spiro, all available in any long grass, from all the way from Pallet Town to the Viridian Forest. Personally, I like the variety as I play the game. Now we've collected some good XP in that last battle before Talot Town. It's good for the Mons and it's good for that future Brock battle. We return to Oak and give him his parcel. And that's probably enough of Pallet Town for now. I'll do some grinding and some training and cut back when I'm up in Viridian City. Ah, it's time to face our rival again. Let's just see how our training has gone. You can see just how much our team is stronger now and our rival is absolutely no match for our far superior team. Let's heal up and go squish some bugs. The game controls can be a little laggy sometimes. Remember, I'm running this off a potato of a laptop and recording at the same time, which eats up a little bit of the limited CPU. I'm going to quickly change the order of our Pokemon, getting Pidgey out in front will help the type advantage against these bugs. That was an easy wild Pokemon battle there to warm us up, and then straight into the bug catchers. I think we've got five to face in this forest. Get ready to see a lot of Weedles and a lot of Caterpies on your screen. And that's what this forest is all about. That's a lot of XP. Higher level Pokemon and trainers is a guaranteed XP goldmine. The second bug catcher was just as easy as the first, falling in just a few strong moves. I've healed up quickly in the background, you probably don't want to see a lot of my footage of running back and forth from the Pokemon Center. I am looking forward to our first evolutions. The third bug catcher time, Pidgey tanks it and cleans up. That's what we really need to be that's all that we really need to say about it. Finally, a wild canopy, making a good addition to our party. And yes, it's Pikachu! Let's catch this bad boy and add him to the party. Now that's what you call a team. All six spots taken up for the early game spread and typing. Now time's for our fourth bug catcher, this time taking him with a weakened team. Let's just see how some of our bench Pokemon can handle him. We don't even need to worry because our rat up front can just clean up. And bam, that's our first evolution, yes. Caterpie has evolved into a Metapod. So many back-to-back -back wild Pokemon battles, plenty of XP, but this end of Viridian Forest is starting to feel like a little bit of a grind, isn't it? Again off screen, I have quickly healed the Pokemon. I want to get out of this forest, so let's do that as quickly as we can, quick smart. I've been making games in Excel for nearly a year now, so this time it's been a real challenge, a time challenge, a super enjoyable, and a little bit different. 
If you have liked what I have done, please let me know in the comments below. It really does make a world of difference for me. That's a lot of great XP in this final section of the forest, and wow, our Bulbasaur is close to evolving. Let's see if we can get that sorted quickly with a couple of quick wild Pokemon battles. And there we go, Ivasaur hits the party. Our final PC heal up just before our first major test of the game, Brock and the first Pokemon Gym. Ivasaur with his type advantage should really carry this easily. Let's just see how it goes. That was a landslide, super easy first badge. I must say Pewter City looks pretty good in the background, doesn't it? And let's see what faces us next. Oh, that's right, I kinda haven't made any more game. And that's kind of the limit I can do in 24 hours. But it leaves a question. What would you like to see me make next? Time to lift up the hood and show you what sort of engine we are running. I'm going to quickly run through the code here in the background and some of the hidden cells to show you how this game is running. Please pause the video at any point that you want to see what is going on. Normally I have all my games I create free for download and play. However, as this is a bit of a remake with elements grabbed from Pokemon, I will not be sharing this. I do have a ton of other free Excel games for you to try if you want to and download and play for yourself. And that's all folks. If you like what you see, why not play some of the other games I've made in Excel? I've been doing this for a little bit over a year now. There's plenty of Excel games out there for you to check out. Thanks for watching and see you next time.